hi friends in our last session we have started with design procedure of multi speed gearbox in that we have completed till determining the structural formula that is how we need to form a structural formula in today's session we will study how to draw a structural diagram and from that how to draw a ray diagram and a speed chart this is fezan kagbi and i welcome you all to our lecture series of machine tool design so let's begin now structural diagram so what is that so we would say that a structural formula represented by a spatial graph that graph is called a structural diagram it is basically a german layout now let us understand that how it is represented and how we need to draw it okay so the first step to draw a structural diagram is that draw z number of horizontal lines that represents the total speeds which means over here in this diagram you can see that i have drawn horizontal lines so this horizontal lines is equal to the number of speed steps which means that if we have a six speed gearbox then we need to draw a six horizontal line okay so that is going to represent the speeds n1 n2 n3 n4 n5 and n6 okay similarly we need to draw n plus 1 number of vertical lines so it represents the total shaft which means you can see that i have shown three vertical lines over here first vertical line second and third the first vertical line in this diagram represents the input shaft okay the second vertical line in this diagram represents the intermediate shaft and the third vertical line represents the output shaft so in this diagram you can clearly observe that it has two stages okay so this space between these two lines represents stage 1 and this is representing a stage 2 okay so n plus 1 means first vertical line second vertical line and third vertical line okay remember that these vertical lines represents total shafts okay now third point to draw this distance between two horizontal lines is has to be kept equal to log phi to the base 10 which means you can see the distance between these two lines we are going to consider log phi to the base 10 but in a general way whenever we draw this diagram so we need to draw it a random way but just mention that the distance will be how much so we are going to write log phi to the uh, base 10 okay so this first stage over here you can see i have written p1 x1 and the second stage over here i have written p2 x2 representing a first transmission group and this represents a second transmission group now consider a case of a four speed gear box so for that we can say z is equal to 4 okay now z is equal to 4 we can break this equation in uh, in our uh, case of a structural formula so it is going to become what 2 or uh, 2 1 into 2 2 so this is our structural formula for a four speed gear box okay now from this can i say that it would have two stages how it is having a two stages so we would say 2 raised to 1 into 2 raised to 1 so total how many so 1 plus 1 is 2 okay so n is equal to 2 over here i have written now by using this concept can i say the horizontal line which we need to draw is 4 okay so this horizontal line is going to represents the number of speeds available and vertical line should be how much so we would say three vertical lines why three because over here there are two stages so we need to draw 2 plus 1 which means three vertical lines so over here you can see in this diagram the first vertical line represents the input shaft second represents intermediate shaft and the third one represents the output shaft okay now in between this space is called our stage so this is our first stage between the two shaft this is a second stage between the intermediate shaft and output shaft okay so in between this we have to write this formula so 2 1 into 2 2 so over here you can see i have written 2 1 and over here in this stage i have written 2 2 since we know that in a first stage two speed steps are available from this equation we can clearly say that two speed steps are available but at a distance of how much so you would say at a distance of 1 
so over here you have to mention that it is a first node point node 1 node 2 node 3 and node 4 okay so whenever there are four nodes so we need to select a in between position that is a median position to start to draw the diagram so over here you can see this is a median position which i have selected now from this position you have to draw two straight lines connecting input shaft and output shaft so this represents the one of the speed transmitted this represents second speed transmitted now these two speeds are separated by how much how much distance so one so over here you can see i have kept a gap of one one unit okay so over here you can clearly see two one which means two lines are drawn and at a distance of how much so one unit okay now from this point over here you can see in this stage two two which means two speed steps are there and we need to keep a distance of two units between a two speed steps which means from this point again we need to draw two lines so from this point over here you can see one line is going in an upward direction and second line is going in a downward direction but how much is the distance between these two lines so we would say two units okay so you can see this is one unit and this is the second unit between these two lines similarly from this point of an intermediate shaft can i say again two speed steps can be obtained so we need to draw two lines so from here it is going to move in this direction this point and second in a downward direction so you can clearly see the distance between these two lines is how much so it is two unit so this represents x which is over here two okay guys so i hope that you are clear that how we need to draw a structural diagram now let us proceed further Considering another case to understand this, I am taking a six speed gearbox. Okay, so you can clearly see the equation will become Z is equal to 3 into 2, 3 to the 6, right? Now, in first, we, we know that we are going to take x1 equals to 1. So, over here, I have taken 1. And x2 should be how much? So, x2 will be equal to P1. Okay, so P1 is what? So, P1 over here is 3. So, Z is equal to 3, 1 into 2, 3. Now, how many horizontal lines we need to draw? So, we know HL is equal to number of speed steps. Okay. So, that is how much? 6. Okay. And how many vertical lines? So, we know it is equal to N plus 1, which means N is how much? So, we would say it is a 2 stage. Okay. 3 raised to 1. Remember, if you remember, we have discussed last time, that is number of stages capital N is equal to N1 plus N2. So, from this equation, we can clearly say that 3 raised to 1 into 2 raised to 1. So, N1 plus N2 is how much? So, n1 plus n2 is 2. Okay. So, over here n is 2 and vertical lines n plus 1 which means total would be 3. Okay. Now, over here you can clearly see I have shown step wise. So, first I have mentioned at the bottom side that is n1, n2, n3, n4, n5, n6. Okay guys. The distance between two horizontal is how much? Log 5 to the base 10. Now, over here I have written 3, 1 that is the first stage and 2, 3 second stage. So, we need to see the median position. So, median is between N4 and N3. So, I have uh, selected this point. Now, from this point, uh, see carefully that how many lines are there. So, we need to draw three lines. That is a three speed steps. So, one of the speed step would be straight horizontal. The first line will be a horizontal line representing that same speed is transmitted. But how many lines we need to draw? So, we need to draw three lines that is representing a three speed steps. So, at a distance of one unit, we need to draw another line. So, from this point, how much is a one unit? So, over here. Okay. So, in the next diagram, you can clearly see I have mentioned over here that is a second line will be drawn. And similarly, at a distance of one unit from a median position, another third line will be drawn. So, this represents a three speed steps are available in our first stage. Okay. Now, going into a second stage. So, for second stage, how many speed steps are, are available? So, we would say two speed steps, but two speed steps are separated by three units distance, are separated by three unit distance. Okay, guys. So, see this diagram. In this diagram, it is represented by a blue line. So, from this point, how many speed steps? So, two speed steps represented by this blue line. Okay, but at how much distance we need to keep this line? So, at a distance of three units. So, one box second box and third box okay clear guys similarly can i say that from this point again two speeds will be available so over here you can clearly see that from this point two speed steps are uh, two uh, blue lines are drawn at how much distance so at a distance of three units so one two and three similarly from this point again we can draw two speed steps right so over here you can clearly see that first and second blue line and both these lines are at a distance of how many units 
three units. So in this way, we can draw a structural diagram of a six-speed gearbox. I hope that you are clear with this diagram. Okay, now let's proceed further. So features of structural diagram. So let us discuss that. We can say that information given by the structural diagram is that number of shafts in a gearbox are how much. Okay, so from this diagram, you can clearly see that we can determine the number of shaft. That is, first represents the input shaft, second represents the intermediate shaft, and the third line represents the output shaft. Similarly, we can say that number of gears which are present in a gearbox can be easily determined. Now, how we can do that? So we can say that there is one line of this represents one gear pair, second line represents a second gear pair, and third line represents a third gear pair. Okay, so we can clearly say that over here there are three gear pairs available. Similarly, from this diagram we can clearly say that over here there are how many gear pairs? So over here two gear pairs will be available in matching with each of this structural diagram. So from this we can say that number of gears on each shaft can be determined. Even there is one of the formula to de determine the number of total number of gears which are present inside a gear box. So the formula is that G is equal to 2 in a bracket P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus up to Pn. So if there are two stages, so we can say that it would be 2 into bracket P1 plus P2. Okay. Next information given is transmission range of each transmission group can be easily determined. Now information which is not given is spindle speed is how much, range ratio of a spindle speed is how much, motor speed is how much and geometric progression ratio is how much. So we can clearly say that this information is not given. Now for determining this information that is motor speed is how much, range ratio is how much, spindle speeds are how much. So we need to draw another diagram. So that diagram is called a speed diagram and a ray diagram. Okay, so let's proceed further to draw that diagram. Now the next step in a design procedure is first we need to select the optimum structural diagram. So the criteria for selecting optimum diagram is first transmission range restriction which means there is a formula that is IG stage has to be equal to phi raised to P minus 1 into X. Now this equation where phi represents a geometric progression ratio, P represents the speed steps in each stage. Okay, P represents speed steps in a stage. Minus 1 in a bracket X. Now X represents the distance by which two adjacent speed steps are separated. So this is a formula which we need to keep in mind to determine a transmission restriction and this value should always be less than 8 in order to obtain an optimal structure diagram. Now next there is a node method of optimization. Now that is basically it represents that we require a minimum size of diameter okay to transmit a maximum amount of power. So that method is represented by a node method of optimization. So the node is a point from which a ray starts or at which the ray terminates. So select that structural diagram which has higher number of nodes. Okay next point important point for selecting is minimum number of gears should be provided on an output shaft. So this is the most important criteria. Remember whenever we design a structural diagram we need to keep in mind that there should be minimum number of gears on the output shaft. It is preferable to keep two gear pairs on a output shaft. Okay, so now next point maximum speed ratio in a last stage should be available. So this means that x1 should be less than x2, x2 should be less than x3 and so on. So obviously we clearly know that x1 is how much we always tell it, it is equal to 1. x2 is how much so we take x2 is equal to p1 x3 is equal to p1 into p2. Okay, so these are the criteria which we need to keep in mind for selecting the optimum structural diagram. Next, we need to construct a ray diagram and a speed diagram. Now, the structural diagram, why we need to construct this? So, we can say that a structural diagram can neither give us spindle speeds nor it provides a range ratio of a spindle speeds. Also, it does not show the motor speed. So these are the disadvantage of a structural diagram. These informations are not given. So for this for determining these parameters, we need to construct a ray diagram and a speed diagram. So let's proceed further. How to draw a ray diagram? Now, in this while drawing a ray diagram, we need to keep in mind that vertical lines should be equal to n plus 2. So n is what? n is a number of stages. So n plus 2 should be the vertical lines and horizontal line should be how much? So horizontal line should be equal to z if last speed of a gearbox that is a maximum speed of a gearbox is greater than motor speed that is 
and em means motor speed okay and if motor speed is greater than the maximum speed of a gearbox so how many horizontal lines we need to draw so we would say hl is equals to z plus 1 so these are the points which we need to keep in mind while drawing a ray, a ray diagram okay so remember vertical line should be equal to n plus 2 horizontal line should be is equal to z if maximum speed of a gearbox is greater than n em that is motor speed and it has to be z plus 1 if motor speed is greater than the maximum speed of a gearbox now what is the main difference between a ray diagram and a speed diagram so we can say that in a ray diagram it depicts the transmission between a last stage a last shaft and a preceding shaft okay and the rays are drawn for the lowest rpm of the last shaft so you can clearly see in this graph represents a ray diagram in which a lowest rpm of a last shaft is represented last shaft means our output shaft and the lowest rpm rpm of this output shaft is what so we would say n1 which is n minimum so this is represented by the rays that is a ray diagram okay now what is the difference so over here you can clearly see that the number of vertical lines are how much so we would say n plus 2 which means the first line represents the motor shaft okay motor shaft second line represents the input shaft which was similar with the structural diagram third line represents the intermediate shaft and a fourth one represents the output shaft so remember that this has to be n plus 2 okay guys n plus 2 the first line will always represent motor shaft line which has to be included in our speed diagram similarly in a ray diagram whereas this line will not be present motor shaft line will not be present in case of a structural diagram why because structural diagram just represents the structure of a gearbox okay guys and speed chart going to represent the entire speed which is provided to the gearbox starting from a motor that is motor shaft okay now let us see this diagram so over here i have considered this case that is hl is equal to z plus 1 in this i am considering that motor speed is greater than the maximum speed of my gearbox which means you can clearly see that the horizontal lines which i have drawn is equal to z plus 1 okay the speeds available are how much six speeds are available okay that is a six speed gearbox but extra you can see horizontal line i have drawn that is representing n e m okay so one additional line over here i have shown why because nem that is motor rpm is greater than the maximum speed of a gearbox okay now how we need to draw this diagram so since we know that a power is transmitted from a electric motor to our gearbox right so we need to uh, start from this point so motor shaft that is having a how much rpm n e m so starting from this point and directly come to the center of the input shaft remember we need to come directly to the center of this input shaft so center of this input shaft would be where so in between n3 and n4 speed at this point okay now from this point of input shaft you can see two lines are drawn which is representing a number of speed steps available in this particular stage and the distance between these two line it represents that is it is three okay so this is represents the distance between the adjacent speed steps from this point of intermediate shaft we can clearly see again two lines are drawn so these two rays are representing two speed steps and a distance between them represents the x2 value okay guys now this is a speed diagram but from this speed diagram we need to draw a ray diagram so how we can draw so see this diagram carefully since we know that the rays are drawn for the lowest rpm of a last shaft which means from the speed diagram can i say that this lowest rpm of a last shaft which means this line okay so starting from a input that is a motor shaft going to the input point and directly going where to the output shaft which is representing a minimum rpm so this is going to represent the ray diagram okay so which i have i have shown over here so you can see this is a ray diagram okay so this is how we need to draw now next step is to construct a kinematic gearing diagram for a gearbox by calculating the number of states on a different gears okay now let us see the comparison between the structural diagram and a speed diagram so structural diagram i can i have shown over here you can see this is our structural diagram and this is a speed diagram both these diagrams we have discussed in in detail okay 
So let us see the parameters to differentiate. Now the first parameter is a vertical line. So in a structural diagram, you can clearly see that three vertical lines are there, which means n plus one, two stages are there and three vertical lines. So the structural diagram contains n plus one vertical lines for an input shaft, intermediate shaft and output shaft. Whereas a speed diagram contains one vertical line for electric motor. So you can see this line and n plus one vertical lines for an input, intermediate and output shaft, which means in, in this case, we can say in total n plus two lines are present in a speed diagram. Then comes the next parameter horizontal line is how much. So in a structural diagram contains the number of horizontal lines equal to the number of spindle speed steps. That is Z is equal to horizontal line. Whatever is the speed steps available is equal to the horizontal line in case of a structural diagram. Whereas we know in a speed diagram it contains the number of horizontal lines required for locating all the spindle speeds as well as the electric motor speed. Okay, now next point is based on a spindle speeds that is n. The structural diagram does not give the information about a spindle speed whereas a speed diagram gives all the spindle speeds available. Next point is based on a range ratio. Now this range ratio is denoted by Rn. So we can clearly know that a structural diagram does not give the range ratio of a spindle speeds whereas a speed diagram gives the range ratio of the spindle speeds. Okay, so you can clearly see that the range ratio would be log Rn to the base 10 starting from the n minimum to n maximum which is shown in this diagram. Geometric progression ratio. The structural diagram does not give the geometric progression ratio detail whereas the speed diagram gives this geometric progression ratio which means by using this speed diagram if phi is not given so we can even calculate the value of phi. So you will get a clear idea of these last three points when we solve the numericals. Okay, last point electric motor speed. So the structural diagram again does not show the electric motor speed whereas the speed diagram shows the electric motor speed. Okay, so this is the difference between a structural diagram and a speed diagram. I hope guys that you are clear that how we need to draw a ray diagram, speed diagram and a structural diagram. In our next session we will start to solve the numericals of this chapter. So till then stay tuned and thank you all.